One of the main purposes for editing videos in Video Studio or any other video editing program is to create DVDs that can be shared, sold, or kept as mementos of certain occasions. Since almost any computer can play a DVD these days, and almost every household has a DVD player, this type of media is very easy, universal, and accessible to view. Being the turnkey solution that is Video Studio, it has the capabilities to create and burn DVDs right in the application. You do need to make sure your desktop or laptop computer has the ability to burn DVDs, as some only have the ability to view them, so be sure to check first. But like DVDs you rented, you can burn DVDs in Video Studio that have a theme and a title in the main screen, and a link to chapters with the ability to jump to any chapter you like from the chapter screen. Let's see how this is done. You can create DVDs from any of the three working areas in Video Studio. The DV to DVD wizard, the movie wizard, and the Video Studio Editor. All paths will eventually lead you to the same DVD creation area. In both of the wizards, by clicking next through your movie making process, you'll eventually arrive at this screen. Click Create Disc and you'll be asked to choose from one of five choices. These are rated in order of quality from the top to the bottom. To learn more about each format, there is a nice, close to plain English explanation in the Video Studio Help. Just hit F1 and search for any of these choices. View the result that lists all the options. And while I'm on the subject, don't be afraid to use Video Studio's help file. It's the best resource for you to learn and get through any process in Video Studio. Next to my video tutorials, of course. In the Video Studio Editor, these same choices are accessed via the Share tab. I'm going to choose the AVCHD choice. It doesn't matter which output format you choose, you'll still end up at this screen. At the top, we can still add additional media to our movie, but I'm not going to. But I do want to make sure Create Menu is checked. In our timeline at the bottom, notice my entire movie is denoted as one long clip. Let's split this up by adding chapters. But before I make my life easy and click Auto Add Chapters, let me show you where you can add chapters in the main timeline. By clicking on any point in the timeline in this little strip here, we'll add a chapter to your movie. So instead of seeing your movie as one long clip in that Add Chapters area, you'll see as many as the chapter points that you've added here. To delete these, just drag them off. OK, so we're back, and let's click Auto Add Chapters. Then click OK to insert the Scenes as Chapters option. And here is our result. Each red line here represents a chapter break. You can now remove any of the chapters or, by moving your playback head to any point, add a chapter. Now, to remove a chapter, make sure you select the clip in the timeline. Try not to place your playback head on the right and the red line, you might miss it. And if you delete one by accident, always just hit Auto Add Chapters again and it'll refill it. Click OK to return to previous screen and hit Next again. Here we can choose a DVD theme. Now this is different than a theme you might have added through the Movie Wizard. This theme creates an introduction to your movie instead of embedding a theme into the movie itself. I hope that makes sense. So when you're choosing your theme, make sure you choose a theme for all the different menus that you have. I can edit the background and music of my theme by clicking here if I so desire. I can also use it to format my text, which I'm going to do. Double click on any of the text to edit it like so and make your changes. Deselect it, but make sure it's kind of still selected, if you know what I mean, and click Font Settings to set your font size and style. You can also resize it just by dragging the corners like you would a regular graphic. You can even edit the small text up here the same way. I can even double click the movie preview here and choose where I want the movie preview to begin. When you're finished editing this screen, click the drop down here and go to the next screen and use the same methods to edit this area. You can also select and resize any of these buttons here. Now sometimes I end up grabbing it the wrong way and skewing it. So if this happens to you, simply right click on the object and choose reset selected objects and then try to reposition it again. You'll also notice that we have one of four screens here, which means we have three other screens that have chapter designations. So be sure to edit those as well by clicking this button here to go to the next menu screen. If you want to preview your edits and the DVD, click the virtual remote control here and navigate your DVD to see if it's working correctly and look its best. 
you're almost done. Simply click Next and you're at the final screen. Choose a title for your DVD. Choose how many copies you would like to create. And then, of course, insert a blank DVD into your computer. And then click the Burn icon here. The first DVD will take the longest, anywhere from a few minutes to several hours or even overnight, depending on the length. Your finished DVD should pop out when it's done, and then Video Studio will ask you to put in the next one. This time it should only take the time to burn the DVD, not any of the rendering time it took the first one, probably 10 to 20 minutes. So if you're creating more than one, don't hit cancel or it will have to render the entire DVD all over again. That should do it. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in another Corel video tutorial.